Welcome early birds. We're going to be starting in just a few minutes at the top of the hour. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome everyone, we'll be beginning the webinar very shortly here. Well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're going to be talking about the strategic aspects of being a leader in a modern healthcare organization. And we've got two very excellent speakers with us today. Before we get started, I want to go through the, the expected housekeeping notes. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please enter those in the Q&A function. We'll be monitoring that, and we want to make sure that all of your questions are answered. Um, very important, if you are here for CPE credit, we're offering one credit today, you must answer all poll questions to be eligible. So please be on the lookout for those poll questions and um, following the webinar, you're going to be receiving two emails. One will be from me and it will contain slides from the presentation today, the recording of the presentation today, and a link to a survey, which I humbly ask that you take a few seconds to fill out to help us do a better job and to address um, topics that perhaps you'd like to see in the future. The second email will be for the CPE certificate, and that will be coming um, from a, our parent company. Um, they ask that we allow two weeks for the certificate to be sent out. If you do not receive your certificate in the two week time frame, please reach out to me. Contact information is there below, and we'll I will help you track that down and make sure that you get it. Um, what I do is I go back and check to make sure that the poll questions were answered and that you were in fact eligible. Um, and then we get that out as soon as possible. So at this time, I would like to introduce Brian Wilton. 
He is the president of LBMC Technology Solutions, and he's going to kick things off today. All right. Welcome, everyone, and thank you, Don. And so let's go ahead and uh, get going. Um, you can bypass my picture there. Um, so um, just a very quick overview of, uh, of LBMC and why we're even having this discussion today. We do lots and lots of technology work uh, for you and make sure your systems are up and running at all times when you need them. Um, we do all the traditional Microsoft things, the servers, the desktops, your firewalls, hosting if you need something hosted, and probably more importantly, lots and lots of security. So we do lots of monitoring and uh, heading off things like ransomware and so forth. And if you've ever uh, known anyone that's had a ransomware issue, or maybe you have, uh, those are uh, catastrophic for businesses. And so we help you with all of those things. Uh, we do a lot of automation work. So automation meaning workflow, and how to get technology to do things that we as humans don't have to do or have to do so much of. Uh, power apps and power platform uh, things, which you might have heard or read about a little bit. Uh, that's becoming a big part of uh, the automation game. And of course, artificial intelligence uh, is playing a, an even bigger and bigger role in automation. We can't really talk about automating things without talking about artificial intelligence today. And uh, of course, the largest part of our organization is ERP or accounting solutions. And we spend uh, lots and lots of time and have lots of people working every day on helping you, your businesses with new ERP or accounting systems that could be finding one, um, getting one installed and, and your data converted properly and correctly and people train correctly and then supporting you kind of for uh, the life of that solution. That's really the largest part of, of LBMC technologies. Along with that, uh, we do a lot of work around integrations. So if you have a new system, generally you have integrations with your EMR solutions and uh, sometimes a point of sale uh, system from a gift shop or some other retail outlet you might have. And, um, and, and so every system today, I think, has some kind of integration that's going on. And sometimes there's some customization that something isn't exactly the way you want it. And so we tweak that for you and kind of twist sometimes the software into uh, being a little more uh, what you uh, need. Um, and, and sometimes we twist your processes a little bit to fit the software a little bit better. So, and we're getting close to uh, about 130 people now spread around uh, this great nation who get up each and every day to take really great care of our clients. And it's time. So that for brings us to our very first poll question. And the question is, what ERP accounting solution are you currently using? And we've got a couple of choices for you there. Sage Intact, Microsoft Business Central, QuickBooks, Dynamics GP, the Sage Legacy products of Sage 100, 300, 500, and other. And I'll give it just a couple more seconds here. So please um, make your selection. Great. Well, here are the results. We've got people who are on Sage Intact. We've got folks that are on Microsoft Dynamics GP. Sage 100, 300, 500, and other. We don't have anyone today using QuickBooks or Business Central. Very good. So We're... our other speaker today is Linda Pinion from Sage. She is a principal solutions consultant. And I just realized we had a little bit of a delay there, Brian. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's um, fine. That's technology at its best. So 
Exactly. And we are we are thrilled to have Linda here. She has presented for us before as well as um, if you went to Sage Transform, it is very likely that you saw her present there. And so without any further delay, Linda, I'm going to turn it over to you. I think Thank you, got... so. No, go ahead, Linda. I was going to say, I think we've got a couple more slides, Dawn, that okay. should be coming along. Yes, so so I'll I'll speak to this one, and so um, we're going to focus today on Sage Intact, and so uh, and how we can use this what I would call pretty powerful ERP system to really better manage our healthcare operation, and we're using Sage Intact for several good reasons, uh, which you'll see today, and Linda's going to kind of walk us through a lot of those. But a few things that you won't see in the software that I thought we should call out um, are around uh, things that are unique and specific to healthcare, but they're extremely important. And so SAGE will sign a business associate degree or what we call a BAA. They are the only cloud solution provider who will actually sign that document. And that is extremely important for healthcare and uh, the financial systems and operation systems that healthcare operations run. And uh, if you are involved in that part of the organization, you'll know exactly what that is and how important that is. And the product has, as you would expect and hope for, all of the certifications that are out there. So it's HIPAA compliant, high tech, and so on. So today you can rest easy that you're seeing a product that really fits healthcare. This isn't something that is uh, so generic that you know we could put it into any type of business, although core accounting is core accounting. What you're gonna see today is really, really unique to the healthcare uh, operation. And so we'll be talking about the numbers today uh, for the most part. And Linda, I think has a little public service announcement that I think she can share with us uh, now. So Linda, why don't you, kind of walk us through some of the beginning of the numbers here. Okay, thank you so much, Brian. And thank you, Don, for uh, getting all of this pulled together and helping host today. So yes, um, we're just a little bit outside of February. We've moved into March. However, February is American Heart Month. And, you know, making sure that we are getting our checkups and we know how our body is performing or not performing is really important. And so in the month of February, um, it's important for you to know your numbers, to find out what your blood pressure looks like and your blood sugar and uh, maybe, you know, step on the scale, which some of us don't like to do, but it's important to, to figure out where we are and what we need to do to make sure that we have a healthy heart. Well, this is really important from a personal standpoint, but it's also important from a business standpoint for you to know your numbers. If you don't really understand how your business is tracking and how you're performing, it's because you're not knowing what's going on. And it's important for you to know in your business as well as in your person. So I would just remind you, um, don't check just in February, check every, every day, um, but make sure that you know your numbers and you have a healthy heart. As that relates to businesses, we'll move forward. It's all about, um, you know, some of the, the industry trends. So Brian, you want to cover this? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Linda. And thanks for the numbers reminder. It's uh, those are necessary evils, I call them. Is <laughs> you can't ignore the numbers. And so just like just like in business. But so we're seeing here over the last few years, some really uh, strong trends that continue to present themselves over and over, specifically in the healthcare space. And so I've got those listed here on the slide. Cloud, you know, it's the thing. Everybody is really taking an initiative to get into the cloud. And why is that? Well, it is actually less costly overall when you really sit down and look at the true cost. It is less money. Um, probably equally important, if not more, is it's much safer. And so, um, you know, for us to maintain systems on, on site, down the hall, uh, on another floor and so on, 
Um, you know, unless you're a really big organization, it's really hard to outspend what cloud providers spend every year on keeping our data safe. And so that, uh, you know, you can decide, is it safety or cost? Uh, you know, safety to me really comes in at number one. And of course, there's consolidation uh, going, going, going. There's no sign of this slowing down anytime soon. You may be or have been part of a roll up of some sort or one company kind of um, gobbling up or coming alongside of another to kind of assist and so on. That's a really, really hot thing happening and has for a number of years in the healthcare business. And, you know, we all need to save money, but we are seeing this over and over again when we talk to our healthcare clients and prospects that uh, this, you know, money savings uh, theme really tends to ripple throughout each healthcare organization. And uh, it's not something that, that we can ignore. And of course, you all know, if you work in healthcare, you know, the regulatory oversight continues to have a tighter and tighter grip on us. And that also seems like there's no let up in uh, those things that uh, healthcare organizations are being asked to do and track and monitor and maintain and so on. Uh, and then of course, the, um, the just the overall change in how healthcare is delivered. It's not, you know, as, as they used to say, it's not your father's healthcare. Um, you know, patients are much more involved in, in uh, the roadmap of, of where they're going and back to Linda's point of knowing your numbers. Um, that data is important and not just to the physician or the provider, it's important to you as the patient. So keep these things in mind. You'll see you can download our current um, healthcare trends, which we do every year, but the current one is out there. But keep those things in mind as we go through the remainder of the presentation today. And you'll see how Sage Intact helps you interact and keep track of these things that kind of we see over and over again. So my last piece here is uh, really on this slide. And so these are a lot of common challenges that we see uh, around our multi-entity healthcare practices. So if you have uh, multiple disciplines or multiple locations, um, multiple providers doing different things in different spots, uh, that creates challenges, right? And so, but really I think we can summarize all of these points into kind of what we would call the big three and that's visibility. So this hits everyone in the entire industry. Um, you know, you, you need to see profitability and performance as things transpire, not days or weeks or months later when the data is stale and it doesn't give you a chance to react or make any decisions that have any value. And so visibility hits every organization out there. Compliance, you know, there's, there's really no room for a misstep here with PHI and all the regulations and so forth you have got to be on top of this, you know, every single day. There's, there's literally no room for mistake. And then controlling costs, as I mentioned on the last slide, uh, it's such, there's such a bright light shining on costs now in the healthcare space, probably more than ever before. And we probably would have said that the last number of years and we'll say it going forward, but it really is kind of a hot topic today. And so the systems that you have and use every day, they really have to be able to handle these, these things and so much more. And so with that, Linda, why don't you kind of kick us off and get us started here on our short journey today into the numbers game, so. All right, it sounds great. Thank you, Brian. So you may recognize this guy if you're a TV person. This is Marcus Lemonis, and he was on The Prophet, the show The Prophet. And I, I kept looking at him and I'm like, why do I know this guy? Well, it's because I watched that show and, um, you know, his point here is is basically what I've already said. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And to Brian's point, you know, you may have this data and you're not using it. You're not paying attention to it. Or maybe you don't know where it's housed. You uh, can't can't put your fingers on it. And it's important for you to, to know the numbers and then to know what to do with those numbers. It's not enough just to have them and, and not know what to do with them. It's also important to know what the, the industry is looking at. So you may wanna do some comparisons to see how you stack and how you rank compared to uh, what's going on in the industry. And that kind of keeps you 
up to date and on point with what's going on, even from a competitive standpoint, uh, knowing what other businesses are doing in your vertical and how they're doing it. So you might have that question of, okay, so I need to know my numbers. Well, what numbers do I need to know? Because again, I may have them and I don't even know that I should be paying attention to them. Well, I'm just going to say that you need to measure everything. You know, part of what Brian was laying out was, was cost and expenses. Uh, and that's certainly a big part. You might just have expenses in a summary format. Whereas I would encourage you to look at expenses in a more granular format. So look at supplies versus payroll versus improvements that you're doing to your facilities or to your clinics. Um, look at revenue, of course, and you'll see today that I have broken out my revenue in a different manner. I've broken it out actually by who's paying for those services and those uh, treatments. But you can break revenue out in, in different lanes, if you will. Being able to know um, how you're tracking from a, a patient or resident perspective. So many of the healthcare organizations that we talk to today, uh, it's all about per patient or per resident cost per day. So that's a, a key factor. Occupancy, if you are one of the senior living communities, knowing you know, what is your occupancy and what do you have available? And if you were at capacity, what would that mean? So what's the projected or what's the predictive analysis of if you could be fully occupied, what would that mean to you in the way of revenue? And then certainly tracking your treatments and services. You know, you can take that and you can say in, in any business, if you're using what you are charging today as your benchmark, um, you, you probably need to know, is that driving the right profit number for you? And if it's not, perhaps you're not charging the right amount for those treatments and services. What treatments and services are getting the most play? Maybe you need to add and staff up more people in order to accommodate that. So these are the things that are going to help you really from a planning perspective, even though we're not talking about planning today. All of this starts with a plan. And I would just encourage you to know that if you don't track it, you can't measure it. And if you don't measure it, it's gonna be that much harder for you to figure out what is the financial health of your practice. And speaking of data, we have more data than we've ever had. I don't know about y'all, but I've had a bicycle in the garage before with some cobwebs on it. And, you know, darn, it just, it, it's kind of amazing when you don't ride the thing, you don't, you don't get the health benefits. Um, sitting in the garage, it isn't going to do you much good. That's the same way with data. If you have the data and you don't do anything with it, or I'm going to add a little sidebar here, or if the data is not structured where it's meaningful to you, then it might as well just sit in the garage and get some cobwebs on it. So we need to have a plan of how that data is going to be structured so that when you start looking at the data, it tells the story of how your business is tracking. And that takes a plan in order to do that. So you've got the data, You've got it probably in your financial system and in your operational system. That's what we're going to focus on today. Once we have that data, then what are we going to do with it? And it's really about getting it to that level of being able to have the data tell the story. And the best way that I know to tell the story is with a picture. I have some folks in my house that won't even read a book unless it has pictures in it. Pictures are a way that help you get engagement from the audience. So I'm going to be much more engaged and pay attention if you show me a picture and you tell me a story. And if you put things in color, oh man, I love color. 
So I'm going to look at things that are color coded. So just remember, you've got to you've got to take that data and do some things with it in order for your audience to be engaged with it. So Don, I think we're ready for poll question number two. Sure are. And here is poll question number two. Which of the following best describes your organization? And this is a multiple choice question. So you can pick as many as apply. Um, you're growing, you're adding new practices, new entities. You're experiencing cost reduction initiatives that Brian spoke of. Um, you're struggling to measure organizational performance. And that could be um, patient, location, um, practitioner tracking. I guess that got cut off in the in the poll question there. Or maybe there's some other challenge that you're currently facing. So I'll give this a few more seconds. And last chance to get your answer to your poll question in. And it looks like these are um, these are evenly split. The first three, there's no others that are indicated, but the growth, which is can be a wonderful thing, even though there are such things as growing pains. And it looks like just about everybody is experiencing uh, cost reduction initiatives and struggling with visibility. Perfect. Right on point. Thank you so much for your answers. And what we want to, we re really want to focus on today is making sure that we are um, tagging our presentation to some of the questions that we're asking in these polls as well. All right, so a couple more slides and then we're going to jump into product. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I, again, I'm going to show you in real time healthcare dashboarding. If you think about a dashboard, just think about the dashboard um, in your car. It's really what keeps you on track, on point. It's letting you know how your car is performing. Same concept here. Dashboarding is gonna let you know how your business is performing as it relates to your financials and your operational data. So we're gonna see several different uh, flavors, if you will, of dashboarding today. And in the next um, slide, it's a little bit more about what's on a dashboard and how we put that together. So we'll start out with a dashboard on the financial side, and we'll look at what I call some quick business insight. And in your role, there may be some key metrics that you wanna look at frequently um, every day, multiple times a day. And that information needs to be upfront and accessible quickly for you. It's all geared around what we call dimensional data. So you'll learn about what a dimension is and how that is so important in your planning or how we're gonna structure that data. You'll also see and hear me talk about statistical and or operational data. I would be pretty confident to say that most of you have uh, some solution today on the operational side, I'll, I'll just go a little rogue here and say, possibly on the clinical side, you may have something like point cl click care, which is a, a common solution that we see in senior living. And there's a lot of information that can come from these systems. And they're systems that we're not gonna replace. We're going to complement and augment those systems. However, there's information in those systems that we want, and we want to incorporate that into the financial information. So we'll talk about that. We'll see some of that in product because that's a key way for you to really have a dashboard that outlines how your business is tracking. And of course, you know, if I gave you a choice between looking through a stack full of reports or looking at pretty pictures, I guarantee you, you're going to choose pretty pictures. So to see that data in a visual is, is really what uh, makes it a little bit fun. And who said that accounting can't be fun, right? All right, so I think we're ready to get started, Don. And let me 
share my screen. Hi. And one thing I'm going to do for bandwidth purposes, I'm just going to warn you, I'm going to turn my camera off. So I'm going to do that first. And let me share my screen. And Dawn, can you just verify that you can see Intact Good Way Health? You should see that. I can. The... Okay. Yes. Perfect. All right. So um, we could spend no less than probably three days going through dashboards. However, we don't have three days. So let's do this. Let's just start out with a little bit of the user experience in case this is your first time to see Sage Intact. I wanna make sure that you have a little bit of the user experience to know how easy it is to, to use the product. So first off, I have logged in as Emma, the controller today, and just know that Emma has all of the permissions turned on. Uh, this is a permission-based solution. So as a user, you can be restricted or enabled to go to specific places by way of permissioning. So Emma, she's my super user. She also has been granted permission to work or transact in all of the entities in this one instance of Sage Intact. So let's do a little terminology check here. So an entity is the same thing as a company. So you may hear me use this interchangeably. And we define an entity as having a separate tax ID. So all of these entities here are in this one instance of Sage Intact. Now, you'll notice that some of them are labeled like senior living. These entities can be named whatever you choose to name them. And in this presentation, um, that you're gonna to see today, you'll see um, lots of different pieces of demonstration or presentation data. So don't get um, confused or, or hung up on that. These can be named whatever your legal entities are. Now, one of the things that I think is important is just to very quickly show you how easy it is to move around. And always when you're starting a new system, you wanna know, is it gonna be friendly? And this is very friendly. There's online help um, available to you on the page that you're on or, or, or directly to the field that you're on. But as you navigate through, you'll see that there are menus. These menus are pretty self-explanatory, all menu and then a setup menu. I've gone into general ledger. So it's very easy for me to, to just move around and navigate that way. I can also navigate from what we call the overview maps and each one of our applications has an overview map. And you can see in the middle swim lane here, this is a best practice. So we've outlined that with some yellow arrows to show you that you know creating a journal entry, then closing the books, and then perhaps doing an adjusting entry. This is a best practice that we will deliver as part of the implementation. Clicking on any of these icons is gonna take you right into the software. Another way for you to navigate is from the bookmarks. And you're gonna see me using the bookmarks today. Selfishly, I do this to keep myself on track. And you can do it as a user. You can set up your own personal menu. These are the things that you wanna to get to quickly and often, and perhaps in the order in which you want to select them. So I've numbered the things and I'm gonna follow the, the yellow brick road here and look at all of these areas in product today. If we come back to the dashboards, you'll see that I have a long list of dashboards here. We won't have time to get into all of them. However, we will take a look at several. I've also used the groupings to preserve some real estate. So role-based dashboards are a common way for us to set up dashboards and I've put them all in a group called Role Based. So behind these arrows, you're gonna see that there are uh, some other dashboards that have been hidden. So just wanted to point that out. And the last thing I'll point out here is the gold stars. And the gold stars are my favorites. So another way for you to navigate is from the gold star menu over here. 
And this gold star menu is things that you have flagged as your favorites. And then you can just click on those and it will take you right to that place in the software. So as we're uh, starting off here, a little role based in that I am the controller, but I'm also the person that is presenting to the board. And the board has specific information that they wanna see on a monthly basis. Now I could offer them this dashboard where they could look at it on a daily basis. I could provide them a login. I could offer this dashboard to them and they could look at this at their convenience. But what I wanna do is just pretend for a moment that this is what I'm presenting to the board at the end of the month. And you may be doing this in your own practice in your own business today. So again, having a visual of how are we tracking, looking at revenue, looking at costs, looking at the net income and loss, and looking at that in a time sensitive manner so I can look at it and how we're trending. And then looking at some of the metrics, this is that quick business insight that I talked about. Knowing what the revenue is, looking at the comparison perhaps to budget or to a prior period, looking at the color coding to see how I'm tracking and knowing if I'm going in the right direction or not. So I have that, that visual that's gonna immediately give me um, how, I'm, how I'm doing without having to look at anything in detail. Knowing that I can take this number and I can drill into it. So drilling into it is going to get me into the ledger itself and get me into the detail and show me that my revenue is being broken out in this case, into three different areas, private, public, and then private pay. So this is really how the revenue is coming into me, how it's being paid or who's being, who is paying it for me. So knowing that each one of these, I can drill in and see that lower level of detail if I need to. But what really gets me excited is these pictures because the picture is gonna tell me how I'm tracking and it gives me the legend out to the side so I can look at this and I can say, when I look at facility 100, wow, they're knocking it out of the park. So, you know, what's going on down here at Folsom? Is that because I have some sort of a problem? Is it because it's a newer facility for me? So I may wanna do some, some research. This gives me that snapshot. My operating margin trend, so I can see that again over time phase and my expenses by department. So where am I spending the most money? Where, where, is the, where are the dollars and cents coming from? And it looks like I've got a whole lot in billing and administration. So uh, is that where I really wanna focus my efforts or do I wanna look at this post-op area because this is an area that, you know, maybe I need to tighten the belt a little bit. So that gives me that information in a, a picture format. Again, some more quick business insight. I'm just drilling down a little bit more into the details of what's going on in my organization. For planning purposes, I wanna look at how I'm trending. I wanna look at my um, waterfall report here. I wanna look at my net income trend. And then of course, you know, again, looking at the plan of where do I want to go and how am I going to get there? Well, it's going to take money for me to do what I want to do. So it's important for me to have a view of what my cash balance looks like and how I'm trending there, looking at my debt ratio. So this is the kind of information that the board wants to know. They don't want to see a stack of reports that they need to filter and thumb through. They want to see something that's very visual. So that might be a dashboard you'd set up for the board. But let's come back down to a more um, realistic view from a controller standpoint. So I'm the controller. I'm, I'm in the business every day. I'm looking at the data every day. So the dashboard that I'm gonna set up is going to have the financial impact that you would expect a controller to want to see. So I wanna look at those GNA expenses. I wanna see how I'm spending the money and I wanna to compare to a previous month. I could have compared to a budget as well. Uh, when I do that, I can see here that comparison that you know office supplies is, is really off the charts compared to last month. So let's take a look at that and let's figure out why 
that number is so high. So this drills me right into the detail and I can start to see that we spent a whole lot of money in December on some office supplies. What's up with that? Well, you know, American Express here, just some regular office supplies, but it looks like I did, you know, purchase a Lenovo laptop here. But it's kind of interesting uh, to see where those transactions are coming from and the detail. So I can drill into that information and I can see the detail of that right here on the screen. I can see that it was paid and I can see that, you know, this was charged or coded to a specific department and a specific facility. Now, in this case, this is probably a fixed asset. It's probably something that I'm tracking with fixed assets. But this gives me all the information, including the posting details. So I'm an accountant. I'm interested in knowing uh, where these transactions got posted. And then, of course, if there's any history to this, I can see all of that, you know, when it was modified, when it was created. And if this was a transaction that had required approval, I would have seen that approval here as well. So again, having that detail means that I don't have to go dig in the filing cabinet to find that out. I just drilled into that right here from the dashboard. All of these key performance indicators, which is what these boxes are, all of these perform the same way with the same kind of drill down and comparison. Now, I'll draw your eyes to this section here. All of these do to's and do from's. These are the IOUs. In some organizations, you're gonna have inter-company or inter-entity transactions where um, let's just say Brian and I are both at different facilities and we've both got bills coming in, AP bills, and I'm just feeling, I'm feeling generous today. And so I'm gonna pay a bill for Brian. And when I pay that bill, he's ultimately gonna owe me for that. So the do to's and the do from's, I'm expecting a receivable and a payable to be created when I post that transaction. Say Gentech's gonna do that for me automatically. And then it's gonna keep track of that. So I'm gonna know uh, where those transactions came from. And I'm gonna know that Brian owes me some money uh, because I paid a bill for him. What I also might wanna look at as the controller is my profit and loss by entity. And again, this is something that uh, because I have structured my data based on dimensions, and let's talk about dimensions for just a moment. When you code a bill or an AR invoice or a journal entry, we're going to ask you to code it to a GL account. And then we're also going to ask you to tag it to what we call a dimension. And a dimension can be one or more of the 12 predefined dimensions in Sage Intact. An example of a dimension, department is a dimension, facility is a dimension. When we look at the data, we then, because we've keyed it in in a dimensional format, we can then extract it into a report and filter on those same dimensions. So in this case, I didn't filter it down. I asked for all of my departments and all of my facilities. So here, what you see is a profit and loss. Each one of my facilities is a separate column. And again, anything in blue is drillable. So I can drill down and I can see where the detail is coming from. Just like you saw me drill into the revenue, I've now drilled into some expenses. So I see where the transactions are coming from. I see the dimensions that they have been tagged to, in this case, department and facility. And I also see the journals that they've been posted in, in the ledger. So this was a general journal, uh, a journal entry that created this transaction. So this is all information that you know, I can look at in real time as transactions are posted. This is getting updated and I'm getting that current view. In addition to the profit and loss report, uh, I might have something around budgeting. So being able to have my budgets in here and looking at my actual versus my budget and then looking at the variance. And in this case, I've again, I've used that color coding so that I can see what do I need to look at and what's important for me uh, to see and dig a little bit deeper into. My cash balance trend, again, 
These are things that are important from a controller standpoint, all financial driven. The expense summary by department. So looking at this and being able to say, I want to look at uh, by department and do that comparison. So we looked at another graph that showed us billing and administration. And you can see I've got some areas that, you know, are I've set some rules and I've said if it's greater than $10,000, I want you to color code it red. So that means I need to go in and do a little bit more research and find out what's going on. I've done these roll-ups and consolidations, so I have that consolidated column out here at the end. So this is gonna give me the view of expenses. I could filter that down to a specific department if I chose to. There's a couple of other things I wanna share with you on this dashboard, and I'm gonna scroll up to do it. Um, one is some quick navigation links. So yet another way for you to navigate quickly if you wanna create those. But more importantly, this thing called Sage Intact Collaborate. So Brian and I are both users. Uh, I have a question about a specific transaction. Uh, it's this AP bill. Uh, so I'm gonna key in a conversation at the transaction level. So I've just clicked on that. It's bringing me right to that AP bill, showing me the picture of what the bill was for. And then down here at the bottom, you see the collaboration section. This is where I'm entering a conversation in this dialog box. I'm sharing it to a person or group. It's recording it down here. This is eliminating or reducing the number of phone calls and emails. When you have a question about a transaction, instead of me calling Brian, all I have to do is just key in a conversation and send that to him in the software. He's going to get that conversation with a hyperlink to the transaction, and he's gonna respond back to me in the same manner. So now when the auditors come in, you won't remember what you did three weeks ago. It will be here self-documented at the transaction level. So that is Sage Intact Collaborate, and it is on all of our dashboards that we create. And it's also something that all of your users can use and it doesn't cost anything for them to use that. So moving forward, just another view of a um, different type of dashboard, one here for cash analysis. Again, whatever is important to you in your role, a spend analysis. This is one that's really important. So now I'm taking those expenses and I'm looking at them by location and by department. And this is gonna help you to understand where your dollars are being spent in what department and help you do that troubleshooting to know that you might be spending too much money in a particular department or in a specific location. You know, supplies may be disappearing and you're not sure why and because they're not being consumed uh, in the clinic uh, maybe there is, you know, something wrong with the receiving. Um, you're not tracking them and counting them often enough. So that's the kind of thing that you're going to find out with this type of an analysis dashboard. And then uh, the last type of dashboard that I want to share with you is an end of month dashboard. And this is one where uh, I think about all the activities that you do at month end and everyone would tell you if we can reduce the time for month end close to uh, a few days less than what it takes, that's a great thing. That's a money saving um, option for us and it makes us more efficient. So what we wanna do is we wanna put everything on one dashboard, everything that you need to look at will encourage you to use a checklist to make sure that you're doing all of your activities. You can set up that checklist. You can have assignments and assign activities and tasks to folks. Keep track of where you are in that close process, and this will help you reduce the number of days to close. Uh, next, I wanna move to just showing you a little bit of that operational data. So financial data, um, pretty straightforward where it comes from, from our daily entry of activities. But we want to also use data that comes from our operational systems. And we want to marry that with the financial data so that we can get outcomes or metrics like you're looking at 
here in this dental group dashboard. So what's key here is that we're tracking financial data, but we're also tracking in this case, the number of treatments. Now we don't have that in Sage Intact. We're getting that from our billing system. Uh, it might be something like Dentrix or one of the other uh, dental packages. And you're tracking that already in the other solution. So what we wanna do is we wanna take that information and combine it and put it into our dashboard. We can do that two different ways. We can set up treatments as a statistical account, which is what I've done. And then we've entered a statistical journal entry to post that into say Gentact. It can be an increase or a decrease. So different than a debit and credit increase, decrease as a statistical journal entry. And then we can look at the revenue per dentist. We can look at the revenue per treatment because we've got treatments and number of dentists as statistical accounts. We're also tracking our patient visits and we've separated the number of visits from the new patient visits. This is all great information for lots of people in your organization. You may be doing some sort of a new promo and you wanna know how many new patients have come in to take advantage of that promotion. And then again, looking at, you know, how is each one of our dental facilities performing and doing that comparison to see how they're stacking up and then taking that information again, how, is it, how are those, um, transactions being posted from a payment perspective, and then looking at our patient visits. If we look at another type of outcome, it might be around senior care. And I know we have different types of organizations on our call today. So in this case, we looked at some benchmarking data. So we broke our revenue out by the types of areas we had, assisted versus skilled versus memory. And then we looked at the occupancy rate for all three of those areas of the facility. What we've also done is we've set up some information to capture the number of available units. So again, using those stat accounts, we know that we have so many units available and so many units occupied. We've utilized that in the math to say, what is our occupancy based on a benchmark that we have looked up in industry to say, based on a particular type of facility, you should be at a certain percentage of occupancy. And so what we've done here is we've used that to calculate the math to say, because we aren't fully occupied, if we were fully occupied, what would that revenue gain be? So now you're looking at some predictive type information based on what a benchmark is telling you should be at. And here, you know, we can go across and we can see the differences between our facilities and why is, you know, assisted care, which is Forked River, why is it sitting at 78% where our Tom's River is sitting at 86%. So just understanding how these are all tracking and seeing that in a report. And then as we look at uh, one last area here, and that's home health, because that is a, a, an area of healthcare that is continuing to grow. So here we're measuring our caregivers. We want to know how many caregivers we have and the number of patients that they're seeing. And then being able to track the revenue per, per patient day and seeing how that is increasing over time. So taking that data from those clinical systems, those operational systems, bringing that in to Sage Intact, and then utilizing that in our reporting. And this is something that you know everyone wants to know because they want to be able to plan accordingly. I've mentioned dimensions several times. I just want to share with you, this is the list of dimensions that are available in Sage Intact. And this is what you'll tag your transactions to. At the end of the day, you'll have that dimensionalized data, which will allow you to filter your reports to say, I only wanna look at a specific facility or a group of facilities. 
I only want to look at a certain department or a group of departments within a specific facility. So each one of these dimensions becomes a data point for you to filter and slice and dice the data from. So that's called dimensional reporting. And then um, statistical accounts. You'll see here that I have set up many statistical accounts. This is how I'm gonna move that data in to say Gentac through a statistical journal entry. I mentioned there's two ways. The other way that this can be done and you may wanna investigate this is to do this through an integration, an API. And the API is an automated feed from the other system directly into Sage Intact. It happens at night when you're asleep and you don't have to attend that integration process. It's gonna happen while you're sleeping. You'll come in the next day and that data will have been moved over and updated. So two ways to get it in, a statistical entry that you enter or through one of those automated integrations. And that's gonna give you that statistical information. And then the last place that I wanna stop at is an insights dashboard. And this is really a dashboard that combines a lot of the different tools for reporting that you have in Sage Intact. Of course, these are those performance cards. We've looked at those and we know that we can drill in to this information. We also have looked at financial reports. This particular one is revenue trend by customer. So being able to say, I have specific customer types and I wanna see how those customer types are performing. And then I wanna do some comparison to see the variances and I wanna color code that. And also I've got a visual indicator over here of a spark line. So again, just seeing that in a visual way and highlighting where I need to dig a little deeper. I also have pulled up revenue by location. I've also pulled in my top 10 customers. So maybe I, I wanna do some sort of a promotion and I wanna focus on those top 10 customers. But what I wanna draw your eyes to over here is what we call our interactive visual explorer. And this is allowing me to really look at some of those pretty pictures. So in this case, I'm looking at office visits and I'm comparing existing patient visits here so I can see how I'm tracking. I can also take that same data and I can look at revenue per long-term care patient, again, opening this up to see how I'm tracking. So for planning purposes, these are the kind of things that you wanna look at and you wanna see how the business is tracking. If you were trying to do this with Excel and moving things to PowerPoint, by the time you get it to PowerPoint, it would be outdated. This is dynamic. As the data is changing, these visuals are changing as well. So this is getting updated consistently and continuously so that you have comprehensive data. So that's what I had to show you in software today. I'm going to stop sharing and have Don take it back so we can uh, finish up our session today. Wonderful. Thank you, Linda. And as we're coming back through, we have a few uh, minutes for questions, but before we get to that, we want our poll question number three. And here it is. Would your leadership benefit from instant visibility to key performance, financial, and impact metrics? We've got yes, no, and I don't know. Those were the those were the things that Linda was just showing you on those gorgeous dashboards. Really fun to look at. Really brings your eye to the thing that matters most to your department or to your role. Very good. And yes, ninety percent of our organ of our attendees believe that they would benefit from instant visibility. I think we all would. 
Yes. Are... Okay. All right. So thank you so, for, so much for answering our poll question and we'll keep moving forward here. We've got just a couple of minutes. Um, the power of numbers, um, they lead to a logical result and there are some powerful results in this deck. So um, Don, I'm just at, for time purposes, if you can just go through these and I'll message to them um, as you're working through. So all of these in the deck that you will receive, you'll see that across the board, people are saving money in staffing cost. They're saving uh, time at month end. Uh, they're saving uh, time in person hours annually. So uh, making sure that uh, their labor cost is being utilized and, and driven correctly. We also, um, in many cases, are able to be more strategic uh, by saving a, a full-time employee in cost annually, maybe uh, taking that person and redirecting them to something that uh, is more strategic in our organization. And finally, you know, cash flow, increasing cash flow by uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars here. And that all become, becomes important because all of your businesses are growing and cash is king. You know, I've already spoke to closing the month sooner and how um, companies are able to do that. All of these companies that we're looking at here are utilizing Sage and Tech. And our last and final poll question, number four. Yes, congratulations, everyone. You've made it to the final poll question. And the question is, do you currently have to manually consolidate entities? So if you are consolidating uh, entities today, you could be spending upwards of 40 hours to do that. Uh, based on my experience in talking to healthcare organizations, when you have to pull that stuff together manually, it is a very time consuming um, process and many times is not accurate when you get done. Excellent. I'll give it another couple of beats here. And I'm ending the poll. About half of our attendees are um, manually consolidating multiple entities. Okay. So we've got a good plan for those half that are doing that manually. So I believe that we are at the top of our um, hour here. And if you've asked questions in the Q&A, we will absolutely get back to you with, with answers for those questions. Again, remember that Dawn is going to be sending you an email uh, with lots of goodies in it. And if you had CPE credit coming, uh, give us a couple of weeks and the LBMC team will get that email out to you as well. Great. Linda, thank you so much for being our presenter today. Brian, thank you. But especially thank you to all of you who attended today. We were very happy to share this time with you and we hope to see you in the future at another webinar or uh, another LBMC Technology Solutions event. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.